y'all, this is Mame from Mame's Legacy, and we're going to make bread today. Um, I grind my own wheat. I use the Augustine Farms wheat berries. Um, I'm not going to tell you they're the best, they're just what I use. Uh, I don't know that I've ever used anybody else's, so somebody else may have better wheat berries. Who knows? If you have an opinion, chime in. Um... They are, when you start looking for wheat berries, you know, you're thinking about making bread, and you look at it, and you're like, oh my God, that's a dollar a pound, and that's expensive, I can get flour for cheaper than that. Yes, you can, but for those of you who are preppers, wheat berries last longer, they store longer, and you can do more than just bake with them. Um, you know, a lot of people use it for cereal, like cream of wheat, that kind of thing. And there we go. And let me tell you something. If you have Augustin Farms buckets, any kind of buckets, this thing is worth its weight in gold. Amazon. Okay. Now, what we have are wheat berries. Let's see if I can get some over there where you can see them. They're just, these are white, uh, hard white winter wheat. And over here, we have my grain now. So, let me move these out of the way and we'll talk about that. Mine is a neutral mill, electric grain mill. I also have a hand crank grain mill. But if you can do it by power, you really want to. Because <laughs> I'm lazy, maybe. Um... It has all the chemical pieces. This is where the flour ends up. It has a filter cut on the lid, oops, hello, on the lid to catch the wheat bran. So that goes, gets this little perfect little spot for it right there. Okay. And you lock it down. And then on the top of it, it's got this little hole piece. That's where the filter goes. Okay. And then this goes on the bin. Before we do that. Oops. As you can see, it's got how quickly it feeds. On the back of it, there's a knob that, that controls how fast it grinds. Or this is where it controls how fast it grinds. I don't know what I'm thinking there. Okay. There's the hopper. Now you cannot use this to grind seeds or herbs or nuts or sugars. Um, because it'll gum up the burrs in there. Um, you, you can use it to make like rice flour. Or, um, I think you can use it to make lentil flour, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to look at my owner's manual and it's put away. So, but you cannot use this to make like almond flour and that kind of stuff. It, no, that you'll, you'll kill your machine. And like I said before, they're not cheap. Um, but... It's got a little gasket thing right here to keep most of it from kicking out when it grinds. And I take olive oil and oil that little gasket because it makes it go on and off so much easier. Because sometimes that thing can get on there and it is a pain to try to get off. Okay. And it's got the little tab A slot D kind of arrangement on it. So you put the lid on there, and because you've all boiled it, it slides closed. And there we go. Now, it has two little marks on here. One says yes, and one says no. This thing, it all has to fit together up in here so that everything shoots out and lands where it's supposed to and all of that. 
it takes a little bit of muscle. There's only one way it can fit. Okay, if you get it like that, you're on the node, you're on the node line. You haven't gotten it in far enough. You have to smack it pretty good to make sure everything's lined up and everything's where it's supposed to be. And then you rub in the olive oil on your hands and start feeding wheat berries in there. So my dogs don't uh, decide to help me with it. Okay. Put the top on. And you turn it on. Now I'm going to turn it on just for a minute so that you can hear it because it's loud. Um, and then I'll turn it off and stop the camera and finish grinding it and then I'll be back. I have it set on a slow feed rate. So here we go. I just said, as you can hear, it's very loud. So let me stop the camera and I'll finish this and then I'll be back. Okay. So, uh, it is about two minutes later, and it has done all those sweet berries. This is when old weak hands are a problem. Okay? Can y'all see what's caught up in there? That's the bran from the wheat that we just ground. And if you are like us, and you like bran in your bread, oh, you make a mess, you can take it off and just dump it right in there. Now, that's what we've got. It's still warm from the mill. I don't even see how finely ground it is. If it's not fine enough for you, you can send it back through and get like pastry flour. It's so fine. Um, but we're just making bread, so all we need is bread flour. So let me move things out of the way and get my bread bowl down and we'll start baking bread. Okay. This is my bread bowl. That's all I use it for is baking bread. Um, wooden bed bread bowls are the best. I don't know why, they're just the best. And you have to feed them, you have to oil them. So I have my olive oil here. This helps to keep your dough from sticking to your bowl, but it also keeps them from drying out and cracking. Um, literally all I'm doing is just wiping the oil around on the inside of the bowl. Now, let me turn my water on. The recipe that we're using comes from the Whole Foods for the Whole Family cookbook. It was put out by the Little Leche League in the 1980s. I have been using this book since then. Um, and this is the best just general bread recipe I found. You know, it's a lot of bread recipes when they, they give you the instructions and stuff, you, you have to add temp water that is X temperature and you have to knead it for X minutes, which is not real helpful to somebody who's never baked bread before. I like this recipe because it tells you your water needs to be the temperature of your baby's bath because it was made for breastfeeding moms. Um, 
you know, when you're kneading your dough, you're going to knead it until it's the texture of chewing gum. You know, instead of for X number of minutes. So, while we're letting our baby bath water heat up, this recipe calls for. Here's my flour. A tablespoon of yeast. And I store my yeast, I buy bulk yeast, and I store it in the colored canning jars in my refrigerator. Um, when you buy it in the vacuum sealed bags, you can stick it in your deep freezer or in your freezer, and it will last pretty much indefinitely. I've used the same yeast, you know, jar full of yeast for like three years, and it's always been good. So, but we're going to proof our yeast because that's the first thing we always do. Um, it calls for one and a quarter to one and, two and three quarters cups of water. That depends on your humidity. And if you end up putting up too much water into it, you can correct it when you get to be putting the flour in there. So don't worry about which one of those you choose. Just choose one. Um, one to four tablespoons of honey, molasses, or other sweetener. So we have good old white sugar here. Uh, two teaspoons of salt, and I use kosher salt because that's what I like. Um, a quarter of a cup of butter or oil. This is just vegetable oil. You can use olive oil, you can use coconut oil. I use vegetable oil because it's the cheapest. So, let me get our water. And we'll get this showing up. Okay, yeast is a living organism, and it eats sugar. So when you're proofing your yeast, you're making sure that it hasn't died. So here's our yeast, and here's our sugar, and here is our baby bath water. Now, if your water is too cold that you wouldn't put your baby into it, it's too cold. If it's too hot to put your baby into, it's too warm. Which sounds kind of silly, but that's the way it is. Um, you mix it up. Make sure that sugar is kind of dissolved a bit in your water. And then you let your yeast have a snack. Usually takes about five or ten minutes for it to prove that it's alive. I'll move these things out of the way here. Um, I know that baking bread, homemade bread is just one of those things that we all love. Um, there's just, it's comfort food. Um, but it also stretches your other foods. Um, homemade bread is heartier and heavier and denser than store-bought bread. Um, you're not going to get any Wonder Bread out of that bowl. Um, but if you serve a good slice of homemade bread with dinner, you can serve less of what else you're serving for dinner because that bread's going to fill you up. Um, so it's a good meal stretcher. I know that back in the day, um, I baked all of our bread. I baked our hamburger buns, I baked our hot dog buns, I baked our bread, obviously, cinnamon rolls, everything. Um, because I could feed my teenage son two hot dogs rather than four. Um, I could feed his daddy one hamburger rather than two. And my cinnamon rolls were big old things that rose and were beautiful and they were filling. And that's why I mean I used bread. I was we were young and we were po, you know. Um, you know how it is when you go to the grocery store with your cal your calculator and your budget 
and you get to the end of the grocery aisles and you have to look at your budget and if you've gone over budget you have to look through your basket and figure out what you can take out those days um young parents just start now I mean, you know um bread's a wonderful snack it's also high in protein homemade bread is um so you know despite what the atkins diet may tell you uh white food's not always evil now this is not going to be white flour because it's not bleached it is more along the lines of unbleached flour if that makes any sense it's not whole wheat because that's usually red wheat berries and these are white wheat berries and my goodness my accent came out there didn't it white wheat white wheat um but if you can see let me move the camera over here look at there now what is happening is the yeast is eating the sugar and the foam is to put it um indelicately that's what that's uh yeast farts that's what makes your bread rise so there you go science lesson for the day so <clears throat> you can go ahead and wait until it's completely foamy but because it is foaming i know that my yeast is not dead so i can go ahead and start now um so i'm gonna do that we have uh two teaspoons of salt okay and then we have our quarter of a cup of this is vegetable oil okay now move all this stuff out of the way i am short my island is tall so when i bake bread i do it on a stool now our recipe calls for six to eight cups of flour um, the less flour that you put in the lighter your bread is the higher it will rise, all that stuff. So, we're gonna start with three clips of flour. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could use a mixing spoon, but I'm already, I know I'm gonna get my hands dirty, so why should I dirty something else I'm gonna have to wash? when I could just use my hands. Take off my medical alert bracelet. Took off all my rings, forgot my bracelet. Okay, now, I spray my hands with olive oil because it keeps the dough from sticking to my hands too badly. Boop. Only took off part of my rings, okay? Now, I'm just gonna start Mixing it in here. You're making kind of a sludge. One of the big chunks out. Just because that's me. Okay. It's starting to make a dough. And it's so wonderful, this flour, having just come out of the mill, is warm. So if you have arthritis in your hands, this feels really good. See, we're, we're getting there. That's probably five and a half cups, because that was pretty heaping. Oh. 
hush girls. It's a cat. You can just let it walk right on by. That's got the consistency of oatmeal. Here's six. If you were using the spoon, this is probably about the time you'd want to quit using your spoon and break in with your hands. There's seven. this way now. It is super humid here today. So I should have gone with less water. Now we're going to get serious here. Going to work all this flour in to our dough. And what kneading does, besides just mix, is it Brings up the glue, allows, allows it to bind all together. Oh goodness, and I don't think I did enough flour. Hey babe, yeah. can I get your assistance? Would you reach in the bottom cabinet over there and get the flower canister in the back in the corner? And would you dump what's in there in here? We're making bread on video, so okay. talk nice, nicely to your wife. Yes, dear. <laughs> All in? All in. Okay, now, as you can see, you can make the types of flour. This is store-bought white flour. It's bread flour, but it's flour. Okay, here we go. Now, it's not going to mess anything up. A lot of people like a mix between whole wheat and white. Especially if you're just trying to get your family to start eating whole wheat. You can uh, wean them off of it. He's trying to get the dogs to leave the room with him and they're just looking at him like he's crazy. They're like, Mom's in here. Okay. Now, as you can see, I need in my bowl. Because I'm all about not making any more mess to clean up than I actually have to. And see, it's still sticking to my fingers. So we're not at that stage 
yet. It will pretty much clean off your fingers when you've got it all incorporated in there. If you over knead it, you know, if you knead it once it gets past that stage where you need it to be, you will have tough bread. Which is why that uh, description in the cookbook about um, you know, knead it till it's the consistency of chewing gum was such a godsend for me because I cannot tell you how many door stops I made because it said knead it for this many minutes and that's what I did. And this is still a little bit stickier than I would like, but we'll make do. Get all that flour loosened up in there. I was only going to make two loaves of bread today, but as humid as it is, I may end up with three. Because I'm going to have to add more flour to this. Okay, time to break out my preps. I'll be right back. Okay, so my regular flour. And this came out of my purple pantry. Now, part of the reason I'm had to add, having to add to this is because it is so humid. Oops, need more oil on my hands. Part of the reason is it's whole wheat flour in here. Now, see, just that little bitty bit has made the bread dough do what it was supposed to do and when you're making bread and they tell you to lightly dust your um, your kneading surface with flour that's basically what the extra flour is is what you would use on your kneading surface so don't sweat because mine may have nine cups of flour in it instead of eight You know, if if you don't have a giant kneading bowl like this, a bread bowl, you're going to end up using that extra flour on your kneading surface anyway. Now, to knead bread, you pull it to you and push it away, and then you turn it. Pull it to you and you push it away. Okay? Now... As I've mentioned before, I had really weak hands. I had surgery on my hands and they don't hurt anymore, but they don't work worth a darn either. So, sometimes I have to beat on mine a little bit. But, here's our bread dough. And see, it's about the consistency of chewing gum. You know? Not the consistency of cold chewing gum. You know how you got the gum in your mouth and you drink something cold and it turns it into a rock? But it's not that hot, you know, you take a drink of something hot and it becomes really sticky. It's kind of in between. So. I'm going to... Move my bread over here and I have a scraper that I try to knock this stuff down with. When you're letting your bread rise, you got to keep it moist or the skin of it, the outside of it will get crunchy and hard and that it's impossible to get it to medium like it's supposed to be.
all that. So, I could knead all this dough in with that, but I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to knead it anymore. So I'm going to be wasteful and throw it away. Then I'm going to oil my bowl again. Okay. Get back up on my stool, pick up my bread. And flop it down in there, kind of smish it down a little bit, and make sure that all the top of it gets oiled well. And then I flip it over so the bottom of it gets oiled well. Okay. Then I'm going to take the dish towel. And because our heater's going, I'm going to dampen the dish towel with warm water and drape it over my bowl. So I'll be right back. Here's my nasty stained but clean dish towel draped over my bread. And you're supposed to let it rise until it doubles in size. So we're going to take an eyeball of where it is in the pan. Okay. Or where it is in the bowl. And when it's twice that big, we'll know it's time to knock it down and shake the loaves. Now, if you want to, you can add stuff to your bread. You can add uh, herbs. Uh, I love adding rosemary to mine. Um, I also add Italian seasoning. Um, But rosemary is my favorite. <laughs> um, now I have also been known to use lavender honey in it, which is really good with chicken salad. That that lavender, just a little hint of lavender in the bread, is wonderful. Maybe not for men, but ladies tend to like it. Um, so we have about an hour and a half our bread to rise. I know this because I've made bread in this house a lot of times and that's how long it takes for the bread to rise. Um, so we have about an hour and a half to wait. So I will stop the camera so y'all don't have to listen to me ramble on for an hour and a half, although I could do it. I'm, you know. Um, so I will be back when it is time to um, punch down our loaf and shape it into the loaves. So I will see y'all in a minute for y'all, but in a couple hours for me. Okay, we're back. Um, while the bread was rising, I went back and looked at the first part of the video and I noticed some mistakes I made. Number one, it is not, what did I say, one and a quarter or one and three quarters cups of water. It's two and a quarter or two and a three cup, quarter cups of water. So correct that. Um, there was something else I did. And I forget now what it was. Oh well, I'll go back and look at it again. I'm going to put the recipe in the description of the video so that y'all will be able to see that. So, let me adjust the camera so you can see my work surface. Here is our beautiful bread dough. As you can see, it has grown. Now, I'm going to spray our bread pans with non-stick cooking spray. 
And one of these pans I'm using for the first time. Rudy from Alaska Prepper was talking about using this pan. So we're going to give it a shot. It's the first time I've ever used it, so who knows what's going to happen. We'll find out together. And then a regular bread pan. And I like to wipe my stuff around because I never feel like it gets right down into the corners when I do that. I'm going to do it on both pans. And I grease my hands with nonstick cooking spray. Ta da! Now, the most satisfying part of baking bread is this right here. Punching down your dough. Get back up on my stool, and I'm going to knead it out a little bit. Now, what you're doing is you're trying to eliminate the air pockets that sometimes develop in bread. You know how you'll you'll get a loaf of bread and you open it up and it's got voids in it. Those are air pockets. So I'm going to break this down. Split my dough in half. Okay. And sometimes when I feel like I can't knead the air bubbles out, I'll slam it. So do our last little knead here and roll up our loaf. Okay. That's what the bottom of my loaves look like. I'm going to try to make sure to get all of the air pockets out. This one's not going to go right. Okay, if you can't get it to smooth out that way, just start rolling it from the end. Okay. And there we have a loaf of bread. And I'm going to pop it down there in the metal pan. This. And I'm pushing it down to kind of encourage it as it rises to fill up those corners. So we'll see how that works. Like I said, I've never used that bread pan before. So I don't know if that's going to help or not. Now, this is obviously too much dough for that one bread pan right there. You'll remember I had to use more flour to get my dough to the right consistency. So we are going to have three loaves. Okay. Okay. Come on. And that one goes into that bread pan. And we have this dough here. So, we'll make a rustic loaf. Bread dough, bread in general, does not have to be loaf shaped. Oops. I really don't get too concerned about what the bottom of my bread dough looks like because 
as it rises for the second time, it kind of fills all that in. So there we go. We have three loaves of bread. And this time, I'm going to put nonstick cooking spray on top of it. it from drying out. Okay. So, we have our three loaves of bread. We'll put our damp dish towel back over the top of it and let it rise until it doubles again. Now, this one, this bread pan, has a lid that goes on it. The object of this bread pan is to make a perfectly square loaf, so we'll see. But, oops, it goes this way. When you bake it, you bake it with the lid on it, so it fills it up and it makes a square loaf, or square slices of bread. So I want to make sure that this does not rise above the top of the bread pan. So... I'm going to assume it's going to take an hour, more or less, to get that high. We'll keep a close eye on it, and we'll let these three rise. I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 to let it get uh, good and up to the temperature so that we'll be ready to put it in when it's risen, and we'll be back then. Okay, since our bread rises more while it's baking, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the oven at this point, particularly this one. Now, this little tool right here is called a bread lame, and it is basically a double-edged razor blade on a stick. And you know how you get the, the breads with all the pretty cuts marked in them, this is how they do it. So I'm going to take this. This is probably a waste of time on this bread since it's going to rise up and hit the lid, but we'll see. I like pretty breads. So we shall see what will happen. I'm not laying the blade on there. I'm catching it, which is what's making it ugly, but you know what? It'll still eat. So now we're going to put it in our 350 oven. Oops, I have to put the lid on this one. We're going to put these in our 350 ovens for roughly. 30 minutes, maybe as much as 40. You put it in for 30 and then you check it. So, I'm going to do that. And we will check it out again in 30 minutes. Let me move my camera up here. I remembered what else I was going to say to you that I talked about last time. Uh, no, this is not the most perfect bread baking I've ever done. Ta-da! Uh, but I kind of felt like it was important to go ahead and record that. I mean, I've been baking bread for 40 years, and it doesn't always work right. <laughs> And if you're just starting out, I think you need to see that. I think you need to see the mistakes and how you can hopefully remedy them. Uh, and how you can, you know, power through through your mistakes. Um, 
it's going to bake. And when I take it out, I will show you that. Um, you know, my kitchen's not spotlessly clean. My dehydrator's going back there. Uh, I'm not uh, all dolled up, as you can see. Boy, I look really like I've been drunk through 40 miles of bad road. Um, but life goes on. And we're not learning how to do these things. I'm sorry, I'm never going to be on HTV, and I don't really care. And if that's what you're looking for, then maybe somebody else's videos are what you need to be watching. Um, and that's okay. Uh, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing, and that's fine. But uh, I'm a real-life person. I have other things going on in my life. I have places to go and people to see. And my goal is not to make the most picture-perfect stuff. It's to make stuff that's good and that's nutritious and that's healthy and that's doable in tough times. Because I really think we're about to start, about to. Uh, I think the times that we're facing are also going to be tough in perhaps different ways. Uh, so, you know, if you're needing to feed yourself and your family, To keep on keeping on then stick around because that's the kind of cooking that I do so I will see you again in a few minutes okay so now comes the big reveal put my cooling rack down here's the one from just our regular loaf pan And if you're not sure if your bread is done, flip it over. You hear how hollow that is? That means your bread's done. Now, much as you want to, do not cut into it right away because it will crumble and fall apart. You have to kind of let it cool and set. This is that one in the loaf pan the Alaska Prepper suggested. I like it. It is, I don't know if you can see, it is flat on top and on bottom. So we have real life, honest to goodness, just like store-bought, square bread. And everybody has that one person in their family that wants their bread for their sandwiches to be like store-bought. And see the little cuts I made in it? I was right. It was a waste of time. Because when it came up, it flushed up against the lid and just screwed those up completely. And then we have our rustic loaf. Turn this a little bit. Okay, the one that we did in the pie pan. This kind I like. Oops, I've got my cooling upside down. I like this kind with with soups because it just, it makes chunks of bread really easy. But there's our bread. Now, I know Alaska Prepper likes to put butter on top of his. I don't because there's only the two of us in this house. And putting butter on the top of it tends to make it um, go rancid faster. Now, probably half of this bread will end up in our freezer because we won't eat it all before it's, it goes bad. Because remember that homemade bread does not have um, preservatives in it. So it just doesn't last as long. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's see if I can get all three of our loaves. And see, they're not perfect. If you want perfect, go someplace else. Because mine aren't, but they sure do taste good. I'm really interested in slicing this one. So when it gets completely cool, I may go back and slice it all up and show y'all the difference in slicing the two different kinds of loaves. This one really interests me. It really does, so. This is Maine, and uh, today is, let's see, what is it? Today is January the 3rd, so, 
pray God it is not the third day of the, oh my God, can you tell, it really is humid here today. Um, well, pray God it's not the third day of the 13th level of Jumanji. So y'all be safe, y'all be productive, y'all be kind, and y'all be here next time. Love you. Bye. Okay, so it's dinner time. And, of course, you got to have bread for dinner, right? And here's the loaves that we made. I have this little contraption thing here that I love because I can't slice a straight slice of bread if my life depended on it. So, this little gadget right here holds my bread. Come on. Still, relatively. But it also helps me to slice straight slices of bread. Right? So, here's our bread that we made today. Okay, and that's a big old honking slice of bread. Let me see if I can't cut one a little thinner. Yeah, this one's better. Whoops. There we go. Slice of bread. Now, because I told you I would, I'm going to slice into the square loaf. And it is narrower. See this thing? I can move it over so it will hold that slice of bread. Come on. Okay. So it's got our loaf of bread in there. And then... Cut the heel off the bread. And that, I think, hmm, yeah, that ought to be about the right size for some reason. A square slice of bread for a sandwich. So, I can already tell y'all it tastes good, so I'm not even going to taste it in front of you. Just so that y'all know, there we go, we got our bread.